we, we now come to one of our key speakers, uh, Ms. Christine Chung, who's from the Office of the High Commission for Human Rights of the United Nations. Uh, if you'd come up to the platform. It's very important that we get the support of um, the Human Rights Commission uh, for human rights. And I, and I know the work that Christine Chung has done in order to improve the chances of that happening. Please. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and thank you to, for the organizers of my favorite conference in Pakistan, the Asma Jahangir uh, Conference. I look forward to this every year. Um, I'm here to speak um, about Pakistan's international human rights law obligations. Pakistan is state party to seven core international human rights treaties. That means that Pakistan voluntarily ratified these conventions um, and as part of that, it accepted legally binding obligations. Part of the process is to report um, on progress of implementing these treaties and receiving recommendations um, on the implementation progress from the expert committees that are attached to each of these um, human rights treaties. Six of the committees recently reviewed Pakistan and Geneva. Five of these committees explicitly speak to the situation of Afghan refugees and migrants in Pakistan. The CEDAW committee, the committee that oversees the implementation um, of the convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women, spoke more generally about the situation of refugees in Pakistan. So for those of you um, who are not uh, using this for your uh, bedtime reading material, I'm just gonna remind you of what the um, committees have said about Pakistan's um, obligations under international human rights law regarding um, Afghans. And so um, one example was the Committee on the Rights of the Child um, in 2016 made this observation about Pakistan. Although the committee appreciates that the state party continues to host a large number of refugees, especially from Afghanistan, it regrets the lack of a legal framework for refugees and stateless persons. It also remains concerned that refugee children are often unregistered, especially those whose parents do not hold proof of registration cards and have no access to education, which forces them to join madrasas live in harsh conditions and are subjected to child labor and early marriages, making them easy targets for abuse, trafficking, and religious radicalization. Furthermore, the committee is concerned that children from Bengali, Bihari, and Rohingya communities remain stateless. The recommendation that the committee made to the government of Pakistan at the time in 2016, the committee recommends that the state party take all necessary measures to A, consider adopting a national refugee law in accordance with international standards and continue to host refugees, especially families with children and unaccompanied children. B, ensure that all children born to refugees, including those who do not hold proof of registration cards, asylum seekers and stateless persons are registered um, at birth. C, integrate refugee and asylum seeking children into national and provincial education systems on equal terms with nationals of the state party. D, provide refugees, in particular families with children, with adequate housing and provide shelter to those who live in the streets. E, enforce legal measures against child and bonded labor involving refugee, asylum seeking, and stateless children. F, prevent and protect refugee, asylum seeking, and stateless children from falling victim to early marriage abuse, trafficking, or religious radicalization. G, ensure the equal implementation of its citizenship laws with a view to extending citizenship to Bengali, Bihari, and Rohingya children. H, consider ratifying the 1951 convention relating to the status of refugees and its 1967 protocol, as well as the 1954 convention relating to the status of stateless persons and the 1961 convention on the reduction of statelessness. Now, I don't have time to read through all the other committee's recommendations on the specific issue of Afghan refugees and migrants. Let me suffice it to say that Pakistan is entering the next phase of reporting obligations. 
Pakistan will be going to Geneva. They'll be sending a delegation to face the committees. The Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination will be reviewing Pakistan in August. At that time, Pakistan's delegation will have to respond to tough questions about the implementation of the previous 2016 recommendations. And there was one explicitly on the situation of Afghan refugees and migrants. After that, Pakistan will face another review, the one on ICCPR implementation. And again, there was an explicit recommendation about the situation of Afghan refugees and migrants in Pakistan. That is just the beginning. There are even more next year. Um, time's up, I've been informed, so I will sit down and allow others to, um, to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Again, a very, a very important list of suggestions coming from none other than the UN, it's UN itself. 